other name that has been discussed as a potential finance minister is that of Arun Shori. While Shori did not contest the Lok Sabha polls this year, he is known to be someone whom Modi relies on for inputs on economic policy. Shori told me in September that he found the UPA strategy to combat inflation and the fiscal situation deeply flawed. The main problem is the, uh, these subsidy growths and these populist schemes, which every political party has welcomed, they do not have the courage to oppose them. So deficits arise. And then we cannot do anything about the deficit and we turn to monetary policy. That is not the instrument by which things like food inflation and others can be fought. But you tweak the interest rate by a quarter of a percent. By what time will this ripple reach food inflation? So, but the whole reliance, it's, you know, it's like that... Uh, uh, that Birbal ki kahani, that somebody, a drunkard is looking for a, his key which he has lost under the light. So he said, did you drop the key here? He said, no, I dropped it there. Why are you doing it here? He said, because the light is here. So also, we can't do anything about fiscal affairs. So we say, oh, we'll do, just tell the Reserve Bank, do this, that or the other. And I personally feel that the criticism of Mr. Subarao was completely unjustified and completely orchestrated because the same fellows whose core competence is to go on passing the blame to others, to Raja one day, to foreign uh, economic developments the next day, were passing the blame for their fiscal profligacy onto the Reserve Bank governor that he is doing something wrong. I do not think that investment climate in India was vitiated because of the interest rate policy of the Reserve Bank. It was vitiated because of things we were talking about earlier. You mentioned retrospective taxation. I mentioned retrospective cancellation of clearances, uncertainty uh, all round, ministers talking in different voices, government outright lying before the court. So that led to great uncertainty. Shori also believes that the flaws in the UPA's management of the fiscal was compounded by a disastrous strategy on disinvestment done not to increase efficiency in the public sector, but as a desperate fix for the fisc. Putting 200 crores into scooters in India is silly. And by killing Air India, by favouring private uh, companies, private uh, aircraft uh, carriers, and suddenly you say, I'll put in so much into further equity into Air India after killing it. He realises that. But for one problem that occurred was that in India, if you do something, I will shout against it. When I come to office and do the same thing that you were trying to do, you will shout against me. So we had built on what Dr. Manmohan Singh and others had done in their tenure. It was concluded at that time that selling minority shares is the worst form of disinvestment because, firstly, it does not change the character of the company. And second, all that money just goes into the black hole of the fiscal deficit. So you should do strategic sales. We did that. The Congress people were shouting just because they were in the opposition. So when they came to office, they couldn't do it. And I remember Mr. Chidambaram in one, in one of his first budgets, probably his first budget, he said, we will disinvest, uh, we will sort of privatize or get strategic sales only in chronically loss-making companies. And I had published a list of 20, 30 companies that these have not made a profit for 20 years. Let us see you touch even one of them. And they couldn't. So now in the end, out of desperation, because of the fiscal deficit, they are selling minority sale, uh, shares. And you have seen even such strong companies as ONGC, what a fiasco there has been. Trading and the transactions are recorded at 11.45 at night. This has never happened. Because the market did not believe that this is a prelude to real reform. So you have to get LIC to invest, you have to get somebody else uh, from one of your financial institutions to put in money. Market sees all that. In fact, it's one of my proposals 
that in all these disinvestments, it should be mandatory to disclose by the next day what proportion of the shares which you say have been offloaded into the market have actually been purchased by the financial institutions of government. Then we will know, really know what is the confidence that the market has in the government's intentions.